Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about force transmissibility. Now what is force transmissibility? It is basically the fraction of input amplitude which is transmitted to other side of the spring. So let's assume if there is some body or a mass, a rotating body which is fixed on a foundation, right? So what exactly happens that whatever is the force that is being applied on this body, a part of it is get transmitted to the foundation, right? So that ratio gives the value of the force transmissibility, which is, which is the ratio of magnitude of transmitted force and the applied force. So this transmitted force is what a part of the applied force that is transmitted to the ground. So for uh, finding the value of this ratio, we'll use the graphical approach method. We can also do it with the analytical method, which we have already discussed how to uh, find the equations for amplitude by using the analytical method. So what we have done is we are taking a lumped parameter system and we have assumed a body of mass M uh, attached to a spring of spring stiffness S and a damper or a dashpot with uh, damping coefficient c right so if some harmonic force is applied on this mass f naught cos omega t in this direction so what happens the displacement from the equilibrium position takes place in this direction and this is only the direction for velocity as well as acceleration right and what happens if we draw the free body diagram on this mass if this force is being applied the applied force which is the harmonic uh, force harmonic function so what happens the spring force it acts in the opposite direction and also the damping force it acts in this direction so you see this is the the part of the force that is being transmitted to the ground will be basically the factor of these two forces but firstly we are finding out the actual force that is being applied to the system so for, do, for uh, making use of the graphical approach, we'll make use of the vector diagrams. And we say that x is equal to, or the displacement is x cos omega t. We, uh, we uh, know that whatever is the harmonic function for force, displacement also occurs in the, with the same uh, frequency. So it becomes as x cos omega t. If we are considering there is no phase lag. If there will be phase lag, the formula will be something like this, which is x cos omega t minus phi. So initially we'll go without any phase lag. So we say that whatever is the position of x, right? So whatever is the vector, what exactly happens is if we want to find its vertical and horizontal components. So if this angle we are denoting by omega t, right? So what is this component giving the value which is x cos omega t? So this is giving the value in the direction in which we are saying displacement is taking place for this system. So we are basically concerned with x cos omega t, but we'll be taking the resultants of all these uh, magnitudes to draw the vector diagram so that we get the uh, you know actual position of them. Otherwise, all the cos factors, they lie on the same axis, so we'll not be able to draw vector diagram so what we are doing the projection of x is on t but we'll take x so we know that displacement is x cos omega t where x is the magnitude to find its velocity we can differentiate it to so it becomes minus omega x sine omega t and this can be written in this form which is omega x cos omega t plus pi by 2 this is a trigonometric relationship you already know now we want to find the acceleration We'll again differentiate this equation. So we get the value minus omega square cos omega t, which can be written in this form, which is omega square x cos omega t plus pi. Similarly, if you want to find the third derivative, it becomes omega square x sine omega t. So it can be written in this form, which is omega cube x omega t. So this is q plus 3 by 2. Now we'll plot the uh, diagram. So if T is the line of projection and we say that displacement is at some angle omega T, so the vector for X will be this. This is the maximum amplitude or you can say the maximum value. So this is the amplitude 
and if you want to find this function x so it will always give the value x cos omega t in this direction right now second thing is the velocity so velocity we see it is omega t uh, what is the angle it is omega t plus pi by 2 so basically it is the phase difference between uh, velocity and x uh, displacement so omega x which is the this uh, velocity is in this direction and what is angle angle is omega t plus pi by 2 so this is the value of the velocity now what is acceleration it is omega square x and angle is what omega t plus pi by 2 so omega t plus sorry omega t plus pi so this is the angle for acceleration now if we want to find the third derivative it is omega cube x and what is the angle it is omega t plus 3 pi by 2 so this is the position of omega cube x now by using these positions of x omega x omega square x we'll plot the vector diagram for this system right so we know the equations the general equation for this system is this which is m x double dot plus e into x dot plus s into x is equal to f naught cos omega t so the force along this axis of x right along this axis of uh, amplitude is spring force which is s into spring stiffness into x so we'll plot s x in this direction right the force which is of this factor omega x right that is what that is the damping force so c which is with velocity so it is c into x which is c into omega x so we'll plot it in at an angle of 90 degree to sx right so this will be the leading vector now the third one is omega square x so this is the acceleration component so what is the acceleration component m x double dot is the acceleration component so m what is x double dot the magnitude will get is omega square x so m omega square x is what we plot at an angle of 90 degree from c omega x and this angle is what this angle is omega t this angle is omega t right so what is the value of this force the applied force in order to balance all these forces will be the resultant of this vector diagram so this vector will give the resultant of all these three vectors and this value is actually f naught right so there are different ways of doing the this question either we can find the resultant of any two vectors then add the third vector right so to find this value of f naught if we make a small construction we draw a line perpendicular on the value of uh, this displacement this line of sx so this triangle right this triangle by using the pythagoras theorem we can find the value of f naught right so f naught square becomes equal to this component this so this is what this is sx minus m omega square x whole square plus this value now because these are the uh, values at 90 degrees so this is equal to c omega x plus c omega x square so if we take x square common so this is the value of x that we get which is f naught upon s minus m omega square whole square plus c omega whole square right now if we divide this whole equation by s right so this is the equation that we get to omega upon omega n square this is square so this x is what this is the magnitude of the force that is being applied on the system now we have to find the force the component of force that is transmitted to the ground so what is the what are the two components that are transmitted to the ground these are the two components the spring force and the damping force these are the parts whose you know they are being applied to the ground so these are the components of uh, forces that are acting on the system which will form the transmitted force to graph so either we can use same diagram this is diagram just to show the reference that while doing the derivation you can use a vertical diagram in this way or the horizontal it just makes the same uh, sense or you'll get the same values so what we see that the forces that are acting on the ground or on the foundation are these forces the spring force and the damping force 
So if we plot a vector diagram, because we know this sx, the direction is in this, the vector will go in this direction, and the next vector will be the velocity function, which is c omega x. And these are the only two forces which are acting on the ground. So if we want to find the resultant, so this is the resultant, which we are denoting by ft, that is the transmitted force, right? So again, this is because this angle is 90 degree, we have already discussed this. So simply we'll apply the Pythagoras theorem and we'll get the value of ft, which is x into under root s square plus c square omega square. Now we already know the value of x, it is this value, so we can simply place the value of x which is in terms of f naught, right? So we can take, so this is the equation that we get which gives the relationship between ft and f naught. So this is the transmissibility which is denoted by epsilon and this is the formula where zeta is the damping factor and omega upon omega n, it represents the frequency ratio denoted by r and omega n is the natural frequency. Now at the resonance condition which is omega is equal to omega n, we see that the formula for transmissibility changes to this. That means at resonance the value of epsilon is dependent only upon the value of zeta. And when there is no damping, no damper is being used, that means zeta is zero. So the value of epsilon becomes 1 upon 1 minus omega upon omega n square, right? Now if you plot a graph between epsilon and omega upon omega n, which is nothing but the frequency ratio, we see that when frequency ratio is 1, that means the resonance condition where omega is equal to omega n. Had there been no damper, the value of epsilon would have been infinite, right? But even with the help of dampers, what exactly happens that the speed, the uh, you know epsilon value is so large that that may cause damage to the system. So basically, in damp systems, the resonance for amplitude or maybe for speed or acceleration is at slightly different frequencies. So even though there are low damping uh, uh, factor, the resonance frequency it can be taken equal to undamped natural frequency omega n. So what happens even in case of light damping, which I'm saying that means maybe zeta is you know less than 0.1, most of these structures, their response curve, it lies close to the damping curve and the resonance, it is very dangerous. So at this resonance condition, when omega is equal to omega n, the amplitude is quite high. Uh, even though uh, theoretically we say that the ampli uh, this frequency goes to uh, infinity, but uh, infinity is not possible practically. So practically the amplitudes are so large that they can lead to damage or breakage. Now one factor that we see is this root 2 factor. From where have we got this root 2 uh, factor? This is showing the value of epsilon. Epsilon is maximum. If we see from the graph for some value of this. So what is this value? This value is calculated from this formula, right? So keeping epsilon is equal to 1. So and taking the negative factor. So this equation. So it becomes 1 minus omega upon omega n square, right? And if we calculate this equation, we find that omega upon omega n is equal to root 2. That means if no damping is being used, the maximum value of transmission takes place when omega upon omega n is equal to root 2. And what happens when this uh, omega upon omega n or r is less than root 2? That means in this case, epsilon is more. You see, uh, when root 2 is less, uh, sorry, omega upon omega n is less than root 2, the value, the maximum values of epsilon are quite high. That means transmitted force is more than the exciting force, right, or the applied force. And when omega upon omega n is greater than root 2, we see what is the condition? That means the transmitted force is always less than the applied force. So this is basically the working range that is required, right? And when we also see that when omega upon omega n is greater than root 2, that means in this condition, the damping is also increased.
therefore it is uh, you know advised that whenever in any system this frequency ratio uh, it varies from this range of zero to higher values instead of using dampers the uh, stops should be used which limit the resonance amplitude 